am going to demonstrate TurboMesh. I'm going to start by taking the cells out of the incubator. Okay. And then we'll go into our chemical HUD to do this. We're going to start by removing the media from the cells and washing one time with PBS. That's our next PBS. It's nuclease free. All of the reagents we'll be working with are nuclease free. Um, remove the media. Quick wash. We're doing the wash um, prior to fixing the cells. We'll be fixing these with 100% methanol. Moving the PBS. And then we're going to put in our methanol. And um, it's going to need about 30 seconds to actually fix. May even need less than that, but that's how long I've been doing it for. And I'm actually only going to use the left chamber today, so I'm going to label it so that I know which one is the left on our little, on our little uh, chamber. Uh, the right one we'll just ignore for now because we really only need to actually do one fish. Um, after this, in about 30 seconds. We'll remove the methanol and we'll go straight to applying our approach solution. So I'm going to remove the methanol and I'm going to allow the sample to actually get a little dry at this point. There's no other point in the protocol where you really want the sample to dry out, but here allowing it to dry out slightly is actually to our advantage. And so I'm just giving it a few seconds to dry out. May I actually previously prepared our um, probe solution, so we're going to use this solution that I have previously prepared. We actually are using um, five microliters of it for the hybridization itself. So that should be pretty dry by now, and here are five microliters of our probe solution. We're going to put this right in the middle, and it should form an, a nice little droplet. Getting it dry is critical for it to actually form the droplet. Otherwise, the solution will disperse everywhere. Um, and we're going to cover it with a cover glass. And once you put the cover glass on, the solution will actually distribute pretty nicely across the bottom of the cover glass. And then we're putting it onto a hot plate. And we're setting a timer um, for one minute. And um, on this hot plate, we like to keep the sample covered. And the hot plate itself is set, set to 37 degrees Celsius, and it's been pre warmed and everything. Um, and um, in this probe solution that I was actually just using, we can, it can actually contains our hide buffer, which has um, dextrin sulfite for mamid and 2XSSC. It has 50 microliters of our head buffer, one microliter of the probe that we're working with, and the probe that we're using today is top 2A in Alexa 594. And then it also has a microliter of DAPI. So we're um, in this one step, we're doing our hybridization and we're DAPI staining the cells at the same time. Um, and so I just prepared this, and I've actually found that these are pretty stable, so you can just put them back in the freezer and use them the next day for another experiment if needed. So in a second, we're going to take our sample off of the hot plate and begin our wash steps. That's our timer. And we will start by adding wash buffer and using this wash buffer to help us actually remove the cover slip. So we're putting in our wash buffer. 
And then we're taking a hooked pair of tweezers where we've just like made our own little hooks on the end. And we're using that little hook to catch the edge of the cover slip and pull the cover slip up. And we can pull the cover slip up, take it off, and dispose of it. And then we'll replace this wash buffer with another middle of wash buffer. Then put it back on the hot plate for another incubation, and now we're going to wait another. Um, or we're going to wait a minute with it again at 37 degrees C. I can show you again these curved tweezers that we use to remove the um, cover slip. This is actually particularly helpful because otherwise it's sealed on there pretty nicely. And we just created the little curves ourselves. And when you um, pull on the edge, you can often pick it up from one side and then it's easier to just pull the whole thing and remove it from the um, chamber. Another thing to note about the chambers is that these chambers, um, the working volume that we're removing every time we do all of these wash steps and everything is one mil. So we're using a mil every time for each of these steps. Uh, the only time we don't use one mil is when we actually add the hybridization solution. That's where we're adding five microliters. Just for comparison, when we do conventional fish, we're using 50 microliters of hybridization solution and, or a probe solution on the sample. So this is quite a bit less. Okay, now we take the sample back off. And so that was our first wash step. This will be our second wash step. And in total, we will do three one minute wash steps with this wash buffer. Apply it fresh. Put it back on the hot plate again for another minute. In this uh, wash buffer, we have uh, oh. Uh, ten. Oh, sorry. We have ten percent for mamid and two eggs at the sea. And um, yeah, so these are the wash buffers. The wash buffers that we're actually using for each of these wash steps. And after we do the three wash steps, we'll then wash with 2XSC at the very end. And then we'll image it with uh, a layer of 2XSC sitting on top of the sample. Um, so those are those images. Uh, just to note, for the imaging part of this, we're using an inverted Nikon microscope. Um, we use a cooled CCD camera, and um, we'll be imaging the sample at 100X. And particularly for this probe, we found that a two-second exposure works pretty nicely. And again, this is COP2A and Alexa 594. Okay. Now this, that's the second completes our second wash step. Our third wash. And we'll start the timer for that third wash. And they found that these wash times are actually pretty critical. Um, the images will look a lot better if you allow for the full one minute for each of the wash steps. I've tried reducing that to 30 seconds each, and that doesn't really work quite as nicely. The images don't look near as good. So be sure to allow the full time for the wash steps. Another thing to note about the hybridization solution, um, so we've added in one microliter of our probe stocks here, but compared to conventional fish, this is still 20 to 40 fold increase concentration. So these are super concentrated uh, probe solutions that we're using compared to conventional fish. But again, we still use less volume. So ultimately, the amount of probe is actually pretty comparable. So, in a second, when this wash step ends, we're going to change over and wash once with 2X SSC. But for the 2X SSC, we'll just put it on and remove it immediately. So remove our wash buffer. We add a mill of 2X SSC. 
And this is just to get rid of all the firmament from the wash buffer. And then we'll add another mellow to it, as I see. And when you're doing each of these fluid exchanges, the wash steps and the 2x SSC, it's important to be pretty quick because if the sample dries at this point, it can really ruin your fish signal. Okay, and now we're ready to image. So we'll go into our microscope room. the chamber directly onto our microscope stage. I'm just moving over to where the sample is. I need to raise the objective. This is an oil objective, so I'm just raising it up so that the oil touches. Okay. And then we're using the DAPI to find our cells. take an image. So our probe is the Alexa 594 and we're going to want to do our full two seconds uh, exposure time. There we go. And you have it. Those are fish spots. You can see some nice transcription sites here inside these cells. And this is what we would expect for the expression of this gene. And with that, it's uh, turbofish. Thank you.